want to extend our warmth to all of our people who are here today and who are visiting with us. We hope you find our, um, our service inspiring. We have a flower calendar posted. Now. We still have poinsettias on the, the altar, but we're ready to take them down soon. So if you'd like to bring flowers in memory or honor of somebody or something, you can sign up as you leave into the narthex. There's a calendar posted. On Monday mornings, you're invited to come to Hardy's and Inman for coffee from 8.30 to 9.30. You're also invited to attend our weekly Bible study. It's, it meets every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. at Aldersgate. Um, both churches combine together to, to study the book of Genesis. So please think about joining that. And then if you are on the trustee committee, we will have a brief meeting today in the sanctuary after the service, so please stay here if you're on the trustees. If you're not sure if you're on the trustees, Can and if you will, please stand for the call of worship. People of the world, it is time to celebrate new beginnings. We step into the new year by faith. People of faith, it is time to look ahead and hope. We step into the unknown and hope. People of hope, it is time to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We step forward together and stop standing.
thank you for bringing us into your house today to be able to worship you. Well, we pray that we won't just do it here in this house, that we'll be able to continue to worship you and bring We're bombarded by everything, and we pray that we can keep our focus upon you. God, may your spirit be with us, to lead us, to guide us, to get us to where you want us to be. And once we get there, May you provide us with all that we need to be able to do what it is you call us to do. And God, help us to be able to, to let others know who your Son, Jesus Christ, is. And not to just do it with words, but to be able to do it with our actions, to do it the way that we live our life. To be able to do it in a way that we can help to lift someone else up. To make their life a little bit better. To be able to provide them with some kind of hope be able to keep putting one foot in front of the other and moving along through life. God, you can do whatever you want. Help us not to put restrictions upon you and not try to put to do all of the gifts, all of the blessings, to be able to do the things that you do for us to be able to do ministry. God, provide us with all that we need. We need the encouragement. We need the motivation. We need the knowledge. Give us the wisdom to be able to use that knowledge. And God, all that we do, help us not to try to take the credit for it, but for all that we do to be able to give you the praise and the glory for others to be able to see you in what we do. And God, help it not just be this church, but for each one of us to be able to leave this place, go out into the world, and to be able to follow your calling in our life. God, a lot going on. A lot of things going on in, in religion. A lot of things going on in politics. A lot of things going on in, in social aspects around the world. Be with each one. Let us know that you are involved, that you're there, that you're still in control, and that your will will ultimately be done. God, just help us not to get in the way. Help us not to hinder you. But use us that your work can be done. God, be with folks everywhere. We've had folks here on our prayer list. We've had uh, deaths within families. Uh, be with those. Your healing hands upon them. Your loving arms wrapped around them. For them to be able to know of your presence and to know that you're there all of the time. And God, be with folks around the world. And may they know that you truly are in control, that you truly are God, and that all have a chance to be your people. God, thank you. Thank you for all the blessings, the love, the mercy, and the grace. And God, we want to lift all of these words up to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the one whom we call our Lord and our Savior. And together we lift up the words that he has taught to each one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <coughs> Let us now worship God with his tithes and our offerings. God, use these gifts that we return to you. Bless them that your ministry may be done. In Jesus' name, amen.
our scripture reading this from the book of 1 Samuel, 3rd chapter, and we'll begin with the first verse. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, his eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. Ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. And the word of the Lord Samuel again, a third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Uh, Samuel and Eli. Uh, gets a little confusing uh, here in 1 Samuel and some of the verses follow. Uh, we've got Eli. Eli's preached. And he's got some age on him, and he had sons, and since he was of the priestly lineage of Aaron, uh, he's a priest, and his sons will be priests, and their sons will be priests, and it'll continue on. Uh, but we have a few little issues here. Uh, when you get to this section of 1 Samuel, it'll mention about a king, and there weren't any kings yet. Uh, it'll mention about the temple, and there wasn't a temple yet, so we kind of don't know quite how this writing, when it was done. Uh, it may have been done a lot later on, about this time period, and so they kind of sneak a few little things in there because they already knew about it. Uh, but here's Samuel. It says that he's young, so he's still a kid. He's got to be under 13. Uh, he's there to help take care of Eli. It's kind of like the servant part. Eli's got some age on him, and uh, it's not the temple, and it wasn't at this time the tabernacle, the tent. It was probably more like a portable building that they could do, that they put the pieces together. And so Eli's there. It's probably just before morning because it says the light of God has not gone out, and that would have been the, the light that shined during the night next to the Ark of the Covenant. And so sometime, wee hours of the morning, just before sun up, Samuel goes running in there to Eli and says, I heard you call. And Eli says, no, it wasn't me. Go back to sleep. And so he goes back into his old spot there near the Ark of the Covenant. And a little while later, Samuel hears his name again, so he hops up, runs in there to Eli. What do you need? And Eli said, uh, nothing. What are you doing in here? He said, I heard you calling me. He said, no, I didn't. Go back to sleep. Go lay down. So Samuel goes back, lays down, and then a third time. And it says that he hasn't come to know God yet. Now, he's working there where it would be like a synagogue, and he's helping Eli the priest, and yet he doesn't know God yet. And God, at this point in time, the Israelites are, are not doing well at all, and so 
God's just not giving them a lot of guidance. Later on, we find out Eli didn't do well at all. His sons were corrupt. And, and so, you know, the whole family was kind of straying away from God. And it says nobody was getting these visions. Nobody's hearing God's voice. And so here we go for the third time. Samuel. Go back to bed. Go back to sleep. Go lay down. And he understands that it's got to be God calling this kid. Samuel goes back. He lays down again. And then it says, God stood before him. God's there. His presence is there. And he says, Samuel. Well, Eli told him, if you hear this voice again, say, yeah, hey, what? What do you want me to do? So, that's what Samuel does. You ever hear God's voice? When I was uh, serving a church about 25 years ago uh, at the church, about it, I'd go wait at the back at the steps uh, leading out to the parking lot and greet folks as they came out. And this mom came out and says, Jeremiah has got a question for you. And I said, well, there's just a few more people, so hang on a second, and I'll be right with you. So those other folks came out. Jeremiah walked over there to me. Jeremiah was six. Jeremiah had long blonde hair, cute as he could be, bright kid. So he walks over and I squatted down in front of him so I could be at the same level as he was. And his mom said, go ahead, ask him. And he said, what does God's voice sound like so when I hear it, I'll know if it's him? <laughs> Being the very knowledgeable person that I am, <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> I've never heard it. Not verbally that way. I said, there are some people that say they've heard God's voice. But I said, Jeremiah, you ever think of doing something and then it pops into your head that this might not be a good idea? There might be consequences to it. And then you decide not to do it. Yeah. I said, that's God's voice letting you know that something you shouldn't do. I said, now, nah. anything ever pop into your head that you think is a really good thing to do? And it seems like a really good thing to do? And something keeps telling you to do it? And it turns out really well? And he said, yeah. I said, that's probably God's voice letting you know what you ought to do. So a lot of times it's not hearing the voice with your ears. It's hearing the voice with your mind and with your heart. And he was like, okay. I always thought he'd be a preacher. He ended up in the military. It's a good thing too. Uh, hearing God's voice. You know, sometimes we think we hear something that's guidance, but we kind of anticipate it. We've thought about it so much, we kind of figured this is what's got to happen. Or sometimes we want to do something and we try to justify it in our own mind and we're, we're like, oh yeah, this, this, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, sometimes we even believe that it comes from God. You know, a lot of times we think so much. We get brighter and brighter and brighter. We have more and more education. And as we learn more and more of, about different stuff and about life, uh, sometimes we just kind of... before, love watching Jeopardy. But a lot of those folks couldn't answer a, a children's Bible exam they had to. Uh, they've already thought their way past God. They've become so smart they don't need you. A lot of us do that. 
But we anticipate stuff, we think it through on our own, and then we try to follow through on our own advice. Or the advice that we get from the internet, from social media, from society, from commercials, from businesses. You know, you really ought to do this. It's been good for you. And they make money off of it while it's being good for you. Uh, a lot of stuff, there's another purpose behind it. But we listen to it. And social media, oh, it's like the old saying, you know, hey, it's on the internet, it's got to be true, right? Yeah. But we believe all of that stuff. Read comments on a lot of articles on the internet. And especially if it has anything to do with religion. And people start talking about that this book here is nothing more than a bunch of fairy tales. Uh, the book amazes me. I don't know how you get these folks together and take all these thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of books back then, 2,000, 2,000 years ago, and they pick 66 of them, put them in a certain order, and they fit perfectly. I'm sorry, we can't do that on our own. We would never figure that stuff out. Uh, but you start reading the comments and you find out how far people away are away from God? Used to go up. Let's, let's, let's go over the gospel lesson right quick. John, first chapter, 43rd verse. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew, and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also in the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathaniel said to him, Anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, Saw you under the fig tree with Philip. Before Philip called him, Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You're the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Nathaniel heard a voice. He heard Philip's voice. And then he heard another voice. that said, come on, follow me. Had the family farm of North Carolina. and uh, We kept cows, usually five or six. And a few years back, uh, we had a lot of cold weather and said, have to go feed the cows. Have to put hay out for them. So we do that there at the old barn in the feeders. And I'd pull up my old pickup truck and had a distinct sound to it. And usually just pulling up after the third or fourth trip up there, you'd see the cows start to come over here. They'd stay down in this low area where I guess it was a little bit warmer, uh, less wind in that area. And, uh, there they come. We got to where after a little while, if they weren't coming that fast, I could yell out for them, and they got to where they heard my voice. They learned it. And there they come. They'd speed up. They knew that hay was getting ready to get put out. And I always get some, some sweet feed and sprinkle over it. And those cows would kind of bury their face up in that hay to try to get that sweet feed licked out of it. But they learned the voice. They listened for it. You know, a lot of times we just hear so much other stuff that it drowns out for the right stuff. We're not quite listening for the right sound. And if we're not listening for it, we're probably not going to hear it. I remember my dad. He'd sit in the recliner and watch TV. And we had French doors there going into the dining area. And that's where my mom usually was. 
So there was a usually make sitting on the couch a little further over and me and my dad watching the TV my mom would be talking continuous she never stopped and so I got to noticing that every once in a while while my dad was watching TV he'd go yeah Mom would be in there just to talking, and a little while later, Dad would go, uh-huh. <laughs> little bit later, yeah. And I finally caught on. Through the years. So, I don't know whether he was actually listening so that he could make those responses? I doubt it. I think more so, he was having to focus on listening to the TV. So a lot of times in our life, what is it that we are focusing upon? What are the voices that we hear? Go to this party. Yeah, that's fine. And he said he was going to go by and pick up Kevin and Eric. And I said, just remember, got to be in by midnight, okay? And the boys knew that for each minute they were late, the punishment got added to the work. So he left. He picked up Eric, and he picked up Kevin, and they took off down the road. I got a phone call about three minutes after 12. <clears throat> but he called, and it was from a youth center up in town that the town church hosted. It's called the Lighthouse. So I said, where are you? He said, the lighthouse. I said, you know you're late? He said, I know. He said, we came by here, and we're helping to clean up. I said, you go to the He said, well, I'll be a little while because i got to drop Kevin and Eric off. I said, okay, be careful. You know you had told me before I left the house that you just didn't think that one was a good idea? That something was just telling you that we probably shouldn't go to this one? And I said, yeah. He said, well, when I picked up Eric and Kevin, I told them that that little voice in your head said that this one probably wasn't a good idea. He said, Eric said, I think we ought to listen to your, pot, your, dad's, your dad's voice he heard. But now Kevin was just the opposite. He was, oh, let's go. It's going to be fun. There's going to be a crowd there. There's going to be all kinds of stuff for us to do and all. And uh, so they decided the vote was two to one against going to the party. So instead, they went to the lighthouse. And they had pool table and foosball and, and ping pong and video game, a whole wall full of them. Uh, and they'd have snacks and there'd be adults there to look out for the young folks. And so they went there and said they had helped out with the younger I said, would you ever hear anything about the party? He said, oh yeah. He said, there were probably about 150 to 200 young people there. And it got raided and a bunch of them ended up at jail. <laughs> so you know, Josh, you learned your life that you gotta listen to that little voice. And it'll usually let you know what you should do or what you shouldn't do. I still wonder though, what are we listening for? I mean, really. Because so much of what we hear has nothing to do with life being better. 
And what are we listening for? Because so much of what we hear from society has nothing to do with our faith in God and growing in that relationship. So what is it that we are listening for? Native American was befriended by someone. They got to be best buddies. And uh, this guy said, you need to go to New York City. The guy said, okay. He said, I'll take you. We'll go up. We'll spend a few days. And so they got there. And first thing that both of them noticed was all the noise. I mean, you had, you had scooters and you had motorcycles and you had uh, people yelling and, and talking loud and you had cars and you had horns and you had sirens and you had, it's just noise. And all the hustle and the bustle, and it was noise and noise and noise and more noise. And they're walking down the sidewalk, and the Native American says, Hey, do you hear that? And the guy said, I hear that. I hear all kinds of stuff. And he said, No, 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 no. Not all those things. Do you hear it? He said, What are you hearing? He said, It's a cricket. He said, Man, there's no way you're listening. You can't be hearing a cricket. There, there's no way. You cannot hear a cricket in all this noise. All these people and all this traffic and all of that. There's no way. And he said, yeah, 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 come over here. And there, where one of the storefronts where I was at, the door was back in kind of like a little cove, and he kept leaning and looking and looking, and he said, there it is, it's in the corner. And there was a cricket. There in the corner of that cove next to the door. And the guy said, how in the world did you hear that? And he said, I was listening for it. So in amongst all that other noise, he heard what he was listening for. What about us? What are we listening for? Are we trying to hear God's voice? Are we listening for it in the midst of everything that's going on in the world? All the hustle and the bustle and the social media and the people and the politics and the everything. Are we listening for God's voice. Not so sure that Nathaniel was listening for it. He may have been. Everybody kind of anticipated something. They all thought something was getting ready to happen. But he's out there that afternoon underneath that big tree in the shade taking it easy. And he heard that voice. They heard it first from a friend of his. And then what about, what about Samuel? Samuel heard that voice. Didn't know what it was. Didn't he? So he took off to see Eli. But then once he found out what that voice was, he listened to it. We find out later on he wanted to hear more from him. And he listened for it. Little Jeremiah, oh, he wanted to know what it sounded like, so when he did hear, he know. What about us? <coughs> we do here, do we believe it? Do we trust it? Do we do what it says? So Brenda, beforehand I told you, a lot of times the more we keep our nose out of stuff, the better God can take care of it. That's probably true. Listen for His voice. stand for a statement of faith. <clears throat> we believe in God who has created and is created, who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect 
faith in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking our hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please know the front of the church is always open for prayer, for commitment, for dedication. Our closing hymn.
of the Holy Spirit go with each one of you today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen.